Before I start, I want to ask you how many how many of you know of have used MapRoulette? Oh, nice. That's about two thirds. So there's still one third of you either either haven't heard about it or haven't used it. Who hasn't heard about it before? Okay, that's still a few folks. That's good because I have a few slides just for you um, that I'm actually going to start with. Um, first off, I'm going to talk about three things. Um, I'm going to talk about what MapRoulette is, so you'll be well served with that. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about why I think and many people think it works so well. Um, then I'm going to talk about the new version of MapRoulette that we released a few weeks ago uh, and uh, what the main new features are. And then um, I'm also going to talk about how to get your own challenges in MapRoulette. And if you don't quite understand what all this means, it will become clear very, very soon especially after I go through these first slides. I was considering doing a live um, demo, but I'm not going to do that because of past experience. Um, so OpenStreetMap open in a few uh, non-bullet points. Um, it's basically fixing OpenStreetMap one bug at a time. So it's, it's designed to, f to serve up small, useful improvement in cleanup tasks that anyone basically can do. If you have almost no OpenStreetMap editing experience whatsoever, there will be something for you to do in MapRoulette. Um, you can either spend five minutes on it or five hours. I can, I've seen people lose sleep over it, or um, it happens. Um, I'm not encouraging that by any, way, uh, by any means, by the way. Um, the URL is maprolet.org, so you can go there um, right now. I don't want you to. I don't want to listen to me. Um, and uh, the core, core authors, um, as I mentioned, Serge and myself. Um, Later, I'm also going to do a call for help because we could use some more people working on this. It's a really great tool to work on. We'll talk a little bit about that later. So I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of what you'll see when you use MapRoulette. Um, very first thing you'll see is, or you'll need to sign in using OpenStreetMap, but I'll skip that. Um, this is a welcome sc screen that will show, that will point you to a, a what we call a challenge. A challenge is one thing that you can, uh, a series of tasks that you can do fixes to OpenStreetMap. Um, and it's going to present you with a default, but you'll also be able to select a different one if you want to work on, on something else. Um, once you select a challenge, it will give you one thing that is wrong with OpenStreetMap right now and you can fix. Um, this particular challenge, I'm going to talk about that one a little later, is about ways that have OpenStreetMap ways that have particularly sharp angles. There's probably something wrong with those in most cases. So we want to highlight that and have people look at them. Um, so when you, when you click one of the uh, edit buttons, either ID or JOSM, you can um, you can go, uh, you will see um, that particular stretch of OpenStreetMap road in, in your editor. And um, this background makes, or the, the ID makes it really hard to see on the screen, but it's obvious that there's a few things wrong with the alignment of this, of this street. So you go ahead and fix that. It takes a few minutes, maybe sometimes only a few seconds. And then you upload the whole thing to, uh, op to, um, to uh, OpenStreetMap using the upload button in your editor, and you're done. Accomplishment and reward. Um, and you can do that like once, like I show you, but you can also do it a uh, hundred times, thousand times perhaps, and we can fix everything in OpenStreetMap that's wrong um, within, um, well, not hours, not days, <laughs> perhaps not even weeks, but because we keep coming up with new challenges. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, so to talk about what makes MapRoulette work so well, I think I want to talk about uh, its past accomplishments and what we've, uh, and the, some of the history of MapRoulette. And I know I've talked about this before in previous conferences, so I'm going to try and do that um, pretty swiftly. Um, it started out as something called the Remapatron. Um, if you all remember the license change that we did a couple years ago, it was, a very, it was a very painful process, but in the end it led to some data in OpenStreetMap needed to be deleted uh, because some people could not be reached or they did not agree to, change it, to the changing license, so their data needed to be removed or reverted to a version that was not, uh, that was not tainted by this uh, by this, uh, by this particular edit that was not um, um, okayed for the license change. So that left stuff like this. Um, a lot of deleted ways, a lot of mangled roads based, based, uh, because other things got deleted. Uh, a lot of deleted roads in the middle of, uh, in the middle of a street, some, some segments got deleted or, or reverted back to an earlier version. Uh, the first thing I did is I, I created a map, right? So there's a map that shows all the, all the segments that are, uh, that are redacted, so reverted to a previous version. And another map that showed everything that was deleted, basically in the nice colors that um, that show that that are that that um, coincide with the OpenStreetMap road classes, so trunk roads in green and primaries in in red. So that gave a pretty good 
overview of what needed to be done, but it didn't really help us fix the problem any faster. So um, I came up with something else. Um, and it was called the Remapatron. So this basically, is, you recognize it? It looks, it looks very similar to map, what MapRoad looks like today. Um, so it just highlighted the deleted roads. I got a file from Federgram in uh, out of Germany. He gave me all the deleted roads, and I put them in map, uh, the Remapatron, and people started working on it. So it turns out if you break the problem into tiny tasks that take only seconds to fix, we make it easier and more fun to work together on solving these big problems in OSM. And um, the graphs speak for themselves. Well, these graphs are particularly horribly designed because I designed them. But um, they show you basically that um, one week later, we already remapped all the uh, motorways and trunks. And another three weeks later, um, we have all the other deleted ways back in. So that was that actually went quite well. So what else can we do with this idea? Um, I think at State of the Map in Portland, I presented the uh, Unzorotron. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, there's a few things I'm not very good at. One is coming up with names for things, and another thing is um, uh, designing uh, how, how applications should work. So if, actually, if someone here is a, is a, is a um, user interface designer or is particularly good at those things, um, we'd love for them to have a look at MapRoLet and see how it can, how it can look better, work better even. Um, I don't have a lot of data for this and Zorot. What, it does basically what it says on the tin. There's Zorot ways, um, and we want those are almost always wrong, so we want those fixed. Um, and we did that with also within a matter of weeks. Of course, we always get new Zorot ways, so this this is really something that we should keep doing. Um, then we went on to do uh, connectivity errors. Uh, this, well, this, <laughs> there's only a few of them in real life, I guess. <laughs> but, <laughs> but in OpenStreetMap, it turned out there were like 80,000 of them. Um, and um, that's pretty bad. I mean, on the map, you can usually not even see them very well. But they are, um, uh, of course, detrimental for applications using OpenStreetMap. For if, if you want to do routing and roads are not connected, um, we're not, you're not going to be able to plan a route um, using those, using that, that intersection that in, in real life does exist. In this case, I mean, it should really not exist in OpenStreetMap, but it's, this is, believe me, this is probably the exception. Um, so we repaired all of those in about six weeks' time, which is like uh, 70,000 in six weeks. I thought that was much better than I expected, even based on the previous experience. So then things kind of fell silent a little bit um, as Serge and I went on to work on the new generation. We got a lot of feedback on MapRoulette. So why, um, why can't we do, um, why can't we work in, I, I don't care about working in uh, Nebraska. I only want to work in, in around DC um, because that's where I live and that's what I care about. So that was, a ve that was the single most requested feature for MapRoulette. Um, I want to also be able to do these, uh, submit these challenges myself. I see a lot of problems in OpenStreetMap that I want fixed, and can I do that as well? Um, I want challenges that are not for the US alone, because that's that's what we that's what because of the Remapatron and everything. Those were those were those were um, problems that I saw for. I just moved to the US, so that's what I cared about. But I realized, of course, that this could be powerful as a global tool, um, and lots of other people felt the same way. And also, I want more different things to work on. So just not what, what I tell you to work on, but what, um, what other people uh, maybe may find interesting. And I'll, I want to do that at the same time, too. Um, so we have, we, have two green we have green lights, but we also have an orange light here. Um, the, the, the most requested feature is actually almost ready. Real soon now is what you say. Um, we're still waiting. We're still building a, a good user interface for that. So we, the, um, we support location in MapRoulette. Um, you, you can you can have local challenges, but it's um, but it's still there's still no way for there's no way for you to select it right now. So there's basically it doesn't work, um, but it almost works. I'm actually was working on it um, last night, so I'm working hard for you guys. Um, Submit my own challenges, that works. Um, no one has done it yet, but we're talking to several people. I think some of them are also in the room here. Um, and um, basically, there's an API for submitting and maintaining challenges. And that's also, that also answers the question, I want non-US challenges, because we can accept challenges from around the world. 
Um, on top of that, well, I'll go into that a little later. Um, and also, more different things to work on. We got you covered there as well. We, you can select challenges now. We currently have two active ones, I think, um, but there can be many, many more. Um, and we are, about to we are about to deploy a change where you can see which challenges are we, we consider easy, uh, which, which challenges we consider a little harder, and which challenges we consider like really hard. So you can kind of choose um, the level that you're comfortable with. That's another change that's upcoming really soon. Um, on top of that, we, uh, we, are now, uh, we are now letting people log in through their OpenStreetMap account. Um, what does that give you? Well, basically, it gives, you, uh, it gives us the, uh, the opportunity to, call, to, see, to have a better view of what, what people are doing with MapRoulette, so who is, who is working on MapRoulette, and um, also in the future, we might do stuff like leaderboards or better statistics. If you, if you click on the statistics page, you see that it's like really poorly designed and not working very well. Um, that's all going to change. Um, eventually. Um, the application code was entirely overhauled. Um, nothing is the way, the way it was in MapRoulette uh, 0 uh, or 1. Um, it's now based on mostly modern frameworks. I'm going to go into that a little bit, uh, the, one of the final slides. And we also have very easy deployment using a tool called Fabric, um, which uh, is you, um, uh, a deployment scripting um, scripting uh, tool that you can you can basically use one command, point to a server, and you have your own instance of MapRoulette if you wanted to do that, if you wanted to do it for testing, or if you wanted to do it for if you want to basically um, have your own MapRoulette deployment even. Because one thing we don't do yet is uh, local uh, localization, internationalization. Um, it's also kind of in the works, uh, but it's uh, it requires some more. Uh, some more changes. Um, so for right now, if you want to do something local, you might want to think about deploying your own MapRoulette um, server. So that's all. That's all also pretty easy. So now for the interesting stuff. Um, you're interested in building your own challenge. We're gonna. So before I go go on, we uh, Serge and I. So I'm just come in. He's there. Um, we uh, are planning to do a Birds of a Feather session where we, go, where we dive a little deeper into creating your own challenges. And, um, and, um, and so we'll be able to get more up close and personal with, with people who want to who wanna, who wanna, uh, do this um, and to talk about the API. I'm not going to go very technical and, and deep right now. So, um, um, but just to give you an idea, I want to talk mostly right now, I mostly want to talk about what makes a good MapRoulette challenge, right? Um, because um, that's, that's the first thing you should worry about when you plan this. Um, so let's look at some of the ones that we're currently running. And then I'm going to go into uh, what makes these, I think, makes these good MapRoulette challenges. Um, if you've used MapRoulette, you've seen this. Um, and I've just shown them in the screenshots as well. So the, the ways with sharp angles, usually these point to bigger problems as well. And this is to, to, an, to a seasoned OpenStreetMap contributor, this looks, you, this makes you cringe, right? This is, this is bad. Um, so um, when, 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 a, when a, a road has particularly sharp angles, it usually points to some, a bigger problem like this. The alignment is off. Um, um, and we do it, but we do it, we try and do it one road at a time. So this is, a, this is, a, this is one, one particular road that is sh supposed to be highlighted on the screen but isn't um, is, is what you're supposed to fix. So there, oh, there's also, this highlights also the problem with this challenge. Um, if, you're, if you're a good citizen of OpenStreetMap and you see this, you want to fix the entire thing up, which kind of defies the purpose of MapRoulette where it, is, where it says um, keep it simple, right? So this is, in that way, this also highlights one of the, one of the, one of the drawbacks of this particular challenge to my mind. Another one that's really new um, is where we suspect um, a road should really be one way, but isn't. Um, this is based on data that uh, that that we, that 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 I acquired from uh, from from Telenet and some of the people who did all the engineering for that are in the room. Um, so that's really that we basically compare where people drive um, and the direction that they're driving in um, to what's on what's uh, what OSM says. And if we think that it's a one-way street and OSM says it isn't, then um, it looks um, it looks like um, it looks like we have an error there. So if you load this up in in Jossum, this is really easy to fix. You see all the other the, the streets around it are all um, one way, but that one single bridge there is not, and it should be. Um, and we found this to be pretty reliable. Um, so, kind of looking at those two, what what makes a, a great MetroLet challenge? Um, to my mind, it's two things. There may be more, but this is what I came up with um, in my experience. Um, it has tasks that can be resolved by looking at 
the, just the data and the available aerial imagery, so no local knowledge required. So it's an armchair tool, right? You just sit there and do your work. It doesn't mean that it needs to, be, needs to stay that way. In the future, we might well do um, something like mobile MapRoulette even, that will, you know, that will um, work on your phone. We're, not, we're definitely not anywhere close to there yet, but it's a nice idea. But for now, no local knowledge is, uh, is, uh, is, the, is, the, um, is the mantra. Um, and that's tasks, that's tasks that are easy to fix, taking seconds and not minutes. And that's basically also what I just mentioned with the smoothing ways challenge. Um, sometimes it can take minutes, and you can get distracted and load a bigger area and a bigger area, and you keep fixing stuff, which is, also, of course, also good because it, 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 it makes OpenStreetMap better in general, but it takes you out of the flow of fixing things, moving on, right? Because ideally, I think that's what MapRoulette should be. Fix, the six, fix one thing, load the next thing. It's the roulette wheel that keeps spinning and spinning. Um, to finish off, I want to talk about, and again, we're doing this uh, Birds of a Feather session um, this afternoon. Is it at 4.30? Um, so please join if you're interested in, in, the, in the more technical aspects of creating your challenge and uploading it to, to, uh, to MapRoulette um, or any other more in-depth questions that you may have. Um, ingredients for, um, for your challenge, just to start you, st start you off thinking about these things. Um, of course, it needs tasks, so each thing to fix is one task. Um, each task has, it has its own geome geometries and its own, can have its, each, even its own custom instruction and some more things that we can, that we can go into more detail about if you, if you come to our afternoon session. Um, of course, it, the challenge needs its own instructions like a help text and uh, a title and um, so the stuff that you see in the interface is all, is all loaded from, from, all from, the, meta, from the metadata that, you're, that, you, that you would supply. Um, you would need a mechanism to keep those tasks up to date because if people fix it in OpenStreetMap outside of MapRoulette, you wouldn't want a, that task to stick around in MapRoulette and have people see like, oh, that's already fixed. So people get frustrated, and that's uh, you don't you don't want that. You want people to keep working on what you what you have, what you what you supply them. Um, and of course, you need access to the MapRoulette API. That's that's restricted to um, well, you basically you need to talk to us first right now, um, or deploy your own. But um, um, and that's, um, and that's, those are, the, I guess, the four key ingredients of a challenge. And, of course, perseverance and time and uh, good ideas. But like, these are the more like, the technical criteria. Some of the ideas that we have to improve MapRoulette down the line. Um, going editorless, so stuff that, uh, face, fixing things directly in MapRoulette. Not so much making MapRoulette an editor, another OpenStreetMap editor, but, um, just asking simple questions about objects, right? Um, is this right or is this wrong? And if you say it's wrong, then OpenStreetMap will do something to it right away. Um, which of these, thing, these, these thing, two things should stay, should, should go into OpenStreetMap? So kind of a conflation type challenge. You can think of all kinds of new things, new ways that people can interact with MapRoulette. It doesn't have to be exactly the way it is. Um, so that goes also to my third point, the custom challenge types. So that, um, that, are, that are not, that are not that may not look anything like uh, anything like what you see here. So basically, show people a photo and say and ask them like, "This photo was taken here at this point. Um, open up your editor and see and and map what you see on the picture." This is a very generic kind of idea that I feel pretty strongly about. Well, I've mentioned mobile map roulette. This is all pretty far off stuff, but it's just ideas that we have to improve. Um, Finally, I mentioned a lot of stuff that we want to do, but we're only two folks, um, and uh, we can use some more help here. Some of the frameworks that we use to build and build to build MapRoulette on top of. So, if you feel comfortable with um, a subset of those or all of them, um, you should come and you find and you think MapRoulette is a worthwhile tool. You should come talk to us and and start helping out um, because our time is pretty limited. Um, there's the repo um, on GitHub, and. Um, with that, I want to thank you for listening, and, um, and uh, I hope that I gave you some good ideas to start your own challenge. Um, and just because Telenav gave me um, a bit of time to work on this, I also want to highlight that we do a... <laughs> oh, that was quick. I guess Telenav gave me five seconds to highlight that we... <laughs> That we're, doing a, that we're doing a contest every month that is also based on like, fixing stuff on MapRoulette as well. Um, and you can win prizes like trips and iPads and stuff. And it's, wow. yeah. we, just, we just finished the, this month's one, so the winners will be announced very soon. 
but that always has nothing to do with MapRelate itself. In, um, uh, but like, thank you for listening again, um, and I hope to talk to many of you to talk about challenges and how to make MapRelate even more awesome. Thanks. <laughs>